This is BBC Two, a night with Doctor Who. Do you want to live forever? Here's how. <laughs> Timing malfunction. The master. He's out there. I am not human. I am not like you. You're going to be all right. Doctor Who was certainly not like us. As a Time Lord, he could prolong his life in ways that you and I can only dream of. Two hearts? With the benefit of a second heart, the Doctor stands a much better chance of beating premature death. If one of his hearts were to get damaged, the other could keep him alive while the first one repairs itself. But as a scientist specializing in human aging, what really interests me is the doctor's ability to cheat time by regenerating his body completely. Just like Frankenstein's monster, he can come back from the dead. By the time he'd regenerated into Paul McGann, the doctor had clocked up at least 950 years. Each time he regenerates, he reappears in a completely different body. Who are you? Don't you recognize me? I'm positive we've never met before. Even Frankenstein wasn't up to that. <coughs> doctor Who might have touched on a process that only now is becoming clear to scientists. It's all to do with this beautiful fellow, the salamander, which has some pretty impressive regenerative ability. If someone decides to use part of his body for breakfast, he can simply grow it back. This sort of regeneration is due to the ability of certain cells to repeat the developmental process, a sort of action replay of how the body is formed. Wouldn't it be nice if we could all do the same? We've long suspected that inside each of us, lying dormant, are remnants of the cells that gave the embryo the power to create the different tissues in our bodies. Doctors treating leukemia have known for a long time that when healthy bone marrow is drawn from the long bones of the skeleton and transplanted into a patient, it's these same cells, the stem cells, that have the ability to regenerate a completely new blood-forming system. And in theory at least, other kinds of stem cells in our bodies could be reactivated to grow new brain and muscle tissue. Which brings us back to the amazing feats of regeneration performed by the doctor. We can suppose that, just like in our bone marrow, somewhere in Doctor Who's body, there are numbers of stem cells just waiting to spring into action. Regeneration in my case is a swift but volcanic experience, a kind of violent biological eruption. And Doctor Who was on the right track. The key to understanding how we might cheat time and perhaps turn back the clock a little does lie in our cells. When I first started studying aging, I was fascinated to discover that our cells can only live for a certain period because there's a strict limit to the number of times they can divide. It's almost as if our cells were programmed to age and die and not even a Time Lord can live forever. Immortality? Oh, that's impossible, even for a Time Lord. To change the doctor's body so drastically means that not only have the new cells got to be formed, but all the old cells have got to be cleared away. The trick for a Time Lord must be to nudge all the unwanted cells to commit suicide at the same time that the stem cells carry out the regeneration. I will give the process a little push and the cells will regenerate. He will become a new man. Not again. But what's impossible to explain scientifically is how this hugely complicated process involving vast numbers of cells could happen so tidily and so quickly. At least Doctor Who's regeneration is more realistic when it comes to his brain, or more specifically, his memory. A man is the sum of his memories, you know, a Time Lord even more so. But in order for his new brain to regenerate completely, while preserving the memories and personality of the old Doctor, 
it's necessary that the new brain cells form the right connections with hundreds of other cells to recreate the patterns that were there before. It's a process that doesn't seem to go too well for the doctor. Since you regenerated, it's as though your memory's been put through the meat grinder. I mean, it's all there, but in a pile of unrelated bits and pieces. Because the brain is so very important, scientists have already begun trying to transplant new cells into brains that have been damaged by diseases like Parkinson's disease and stroke. The very limited success that's been achieved to date shows just how difficult an area this is to develop, and it makes the doctor's feats of regeneration seem all the more amazing. You're trying to tell me that you've come back from the dead? Yes. No, sorry. The dead stay dead. You can't turn back time. Yes, you can. He can carry on cheating time by traveling back into the past or into the future until the next time the damage catches up with him and he needs a new body. Look, Brigadier, look. I think it's starting. Well, here we go again. <laughs>